At the beginning of this playlist, I had some numbers, and I was saying these numbers were the ages of people at my party, and then later on I wanted to add grandpa, but I just can't say int sub 3 gets 101, no, that was grandma's age, int sub 3 is 99, in this case we have element 0, 1, and 2, so 3 would be out of here, out of bounds, no good. In fact, if I run this, I believe we get our exception. Index out of bounds. The program closes. I love it when, when it asks me, do you want to debug the program? Do you want to check online for... Yeah, let's check online for my terrible program. Whatever. Whatever. Anyway, arrays are not flexible. Okay, if I want to add Grandpa to the mix, you saw how I had to instantiate a new array and add a new item. Well, this has been a common problem forever. And so languages introduced these things called dynamic containers, which in our case, we want a list or something that'll grow and shrink as we need it. So that leads me to a very sad story. And the sad story is Microsoft releasing .NET before generics came out. If you want to learn about generics, go watch my generic playlist. But in short, I think, if my knowledge is correct, marketing was anxious to get .NET out the door, I think, in the year 2000. And one of the things .NET shipped without was without generics. And without generics, then all of a sudden we get backwards compatibility issues and all this headache. Let me, let me see if I can introduce what's going on here. I want to add Grandpa to my party here. And before generics came out, I remember doing this constantly when I was a brand new .NET programmer. I'd say array list, and array list is using system.collections. I'd say array list, my party ages, gets new array list. Then I'd say my party ages uh, dot add 25, my party ages dot add, I'm going to actually control L, V, 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 and here's 25, 34, 32, and then now we can add grandpa. So my party ages is a lot more flexible than this array because I can add all I want to. Now it just turns out that array list is actually maintaining an array underneath the hood for us so it fills up an array and if we add too many items then array list will say oh well let's make a new array and copy all the items over as we saw in a previous video i'll actually i think i'll actually implement one of these for you just so you get the idea of what's going on but from the high level view hey this is cool i can add as many people as i want and array list is much more flexible than ints well array list came out when .NET came out and let me just put my cursor here and hit control shift space and look at the argument I can add here. I can say object value. Okay, we're looking at the pre-generic version of .NET here. They said, let's ship array list and everything in C sharp inherits from object. So if array list can store objects, we can store anything we want to, which is fine. It's not too big of a deal. I can for each on my array list, int i in actually let's say int age in my party ages, console right line age, control F5, you can see all of the ages are there. But there's another problem with storing just objects. Okay, I can I can come in here and say, well, my party ages dot add Billy. Okay, Billy is a string here. Billy's not an int, but this is completely legal. Control shift B Build, build succeeded, and oh, look at that. I can add Billy because Billy is an object. Ah, ah, now I got all these ages mixed with strings, and somebody screwed up somewhere. And when I try to iterate over this and say, well, for each int age in my party ages, control F5, we get through some of the ages, but then we say, well, you try to convert that string to an int, and that cast just isn't going to fly. So, anyway, this is not a huge problem, but kind of a headache. And then Another thing, if you go look at my boxing videos, when we say add, we have to box all these values, which adds overhead to the heap, and it's going to fragment the heap, and all those other issues I don't want to get into in this video, but go watch my boxing videos if you like. Anyway, Microsoft let .NET sit for a while and kind of gain popularity and that sort of thing. And in the meantime, they're like, oh, we really should have added this generics feature. Let's add this generics feature. And they did. Okay, let me add another using up here, system.collections.generics. I have a playlist on generics if you want to learn about the details of generics. But now instead of saying array list, let's quote unquote deprecate array list, not use array list anymore. Instead, let's say list. And list is going to store ints. Look at this nice generic type argument here. And I'll say my party ages two gets new list of int. I'm actually going to copy all this, Control-C, and delete those two lines of code. 
Control V, and I'll Alt drag down here, and I'll say my party age is two. And notice all these are fine except the string version. All right, now that we have generics list, the add takes this generic type argument I'm passing in, this int, and says, well, let's have them add ints. So when we try to add a string, we get this compile time check, and it says, hey, you're trying to add a string where I'm expecting an int. So that's not going to fly. Control Shift B, build error. That's nice. Anyway, that's a sad story of Microsoft releasing .NET before generics was ready. I think they were just trying to get a competitive product out there against Java, and it worked. But now all of a sudden we have these non-generic collections, and we have these generic ones. In fact, if I come in here and say system dot collections dot, we have hash table, we have array list. I showed you that. We have all these interfaces that are non-generic interfaces. Ooh, Q, good thing. Sorted list, that sort of thing. Stack. We're going to talk about all these in this playlist. But I can say generic dot, and oh, guess what? I get dictionary, which is the non-generic, or which is the generic version of the non-generic hash table. Oh, it's a duplicate. Oh, it's kind of a du well, it is a duplicate, except. Hash dictionary is, is generic. And then what else do we have here? Linked list. That's actually new. We'll talk about linked list. We have list. List is just the generic version of array list. We have queue, which is the generic version of the non-generic queue. And oh, we got all this redundancy. What a headache. It's hard enough to learn this stuff as it is. Now, why do I have this bloated API? Because Microsoft was too anxious to get .NET out the door before it was really ready. They should have released .NET with generics, but they didn't. So now we have these non-generic versions, and we have these generic versions. And <sighs> What a headache. But anyway, I'm going to just not cover the non-generic ones. Not going to not cover. Did I say not? We're not going to cover the non-generic ones. Consider them deprecated, old. We don't need them anymore. We're just going to look at the generic ones, and we're going to look at their functionality, what they're useful for, and probably also implement a few of these in this playlist.